G'day guys, how's it going? It's Cody Orgel from CycleTravelOverload.com and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at some of the best gravel bikes under or around that $1,000 mark, US dollars that is. So I did a video about a year ago about the best gravel bikes under $1,000 and it was quite a popular video. So I'm gonna film another one, but this one is gonna include 2020 gravel bikes and also some 2021 gravel bikes that have just been released. So I have a bit of a criteria that I uh, took before deciding on all these bikes. So here at Cycle Travel Overload, we love traveling by bike and using a bike to explore new places, uh, meet new people and have, you know, fantastic fun adventures. And to do so, I know gravel bikes aren't really the perfect bike for adventures, much like a touring bike or, you know, a mountain bike or something like that where you can strap bike packing bags on and to explore some really rad off-road trails and stuff like that. However, these gravel bikes have some mountain bikes, some touring characteristics in terms of the geometry, being more longer wheelbase, longer chain stay, just to add that a little bit more stability so when the bike is under a heavy load with gear, it's a bit more stable to ride. That also means that the trail is a little bit longer. It's not too twitchy in terms of cornering and stuff like that. It's a bit more stable in that aspect as well. And also the stack to reach ratio is over that 1.5 mark. So then it's allowing you to sit up quite upright so you don't get a sore back from long days of riding. So it adds that a little extra comfort for longer days in the saddle. And then also tire clearance is a big thing as well. So most gravel bikes or your average gravel bike is gonna fit like a 38, 40 millimeter, 700C tire, something like that. These gravel bikes fit 2.1 or even up to 2.3 inch mountain bike tires, 650B in some cases, and around that, you know, 40 plus range. So you're looking at maybe 50 mils if you're lucky, somewhere around there. That gives these gravel bikes that little bit more of an edge over your average gravel bike. So if you're looking for a gravel bike more to be racy and quick and that kind of stuff, I would suggest you hop over to cycletraveloverload.com. The link that's in the description will take you to an ultimate gravel bikes under a thousand dollar list which has much more options in there. And some of those options have a bit more of a racier geometry. So you're a bit more aerodynamic if you're wanting to ride really fast, maybe replace your road bike with a bike that's a bit more capable to crush some gravel if you like. So definitely check out that post there. But without further ado, let's get into this video. Also, it's worth mentioning as well that the gear ratio, if you're hoping to take your bike on adventures and have gear on your bike, you need a good gear ratio. And for this uh, list, anything under around that 25 inch climbing gear is probably gonna be best if you're just hoping to carry, I don't know, 10 kilos of gear, like bike packing bags on your bike, pretty lightweight sort of setup. Anything under 25 inches is gonna be good. Okay, so in no particular order, we'll start off with the Breezer Radar Expert. This is probably the most adventure ready gravel bike in this list. So if you're looking for a bike that is gonna take you on some rad adventures, that's built pretty quality and it has some pretty good quality components and all the mounting options you could probably need for all your gear and the tire clearance to match that, then this bike is probably your better option. Made from a full chromoly steel frame and fork build, you know, that steel gravel bike feel that I like. Uh, I got this bike here, the Sutra, it's steel. There's something about steel that I like. It's a really strong and really great material for adventure cycling. So it is a bit heavier, which is one of the downsides to it. And that means this this bike is just under 13 kilograms at 12.8, which is 28.29 pound. And also it has one of the better quality components, as I said before, so it has an upper to mid range component level compared to most other bikes that we're gonna be talking about here, apart from one other that has the best quality um, in the list. This is probably second or third best when it comes to quality of components. It also comes stock with 700C by 45 mil tires. 45 mil is a decent width if you're looking to get off the beaten track, but it also has a clearance for a max 29er by 2.2 inch mountain bike tires which gets me excited. So with a two-piece hollow axle, you get a 46 by 30 tooth crank up the front with the Shimano HG 1136 tooth, which is a nine speed cassette in the rear. So overall, uh, when we look at the gear ratios, this gives you a 0.83 by 4.18. If you're gonna be rolling on those 700C by 45 stock 
wheels and tires that come with it. So that gives you a grand 23.27 inch granny gear, which is one of the better ones for gravel bikes under around that thousand dollar mark, which is great. So this bike here cost me three and a half and it has about a, almost a 25 inch climbing gear. So this bike under a thousand dollars and you get about one and a half or so better climbing gear inches. You just can't go wrong with that. that. That is value for money right there. So taking a quick look at the geometry uh, for all these bikes, we just compare the medium size frame geometry, uh, taking a look at the chainstay length and the trail and also the stack reach ratio. And for this bike, you have a chainstay length of 457 millimeters, which puts it right in that touring bike length. So if you wanna ride panniers in the rear, it definitely offers enough heel clearance there. And it also offers a longer wheelbase at 1,070 millimeters, which is pretty comparable to something like the Surly Long Haul Trucker. So if you're under a heavy load, this bike is gonna be able to, you know, feel fairly comfortable and hold up really well. And it also is fairly low to the ground with a bottom bracket length of 274 millimeters. And also being that little bit lower to the ground, it offers a lower center of gravity. So when the bike is under a load, it just rides better. Then when comparing the standover height to other bikes, it's considered a little bit lower than most at 762 millimeters or so. And then also the trail is 69 millimeters. So this offers a little slower handling capabilities, which probably is best if you're, if you're running a load up the front and you, your bike is loaded, you want a little bit better control and stability there. And I should also mention that the stack to reach ratio is 1.57, which is fairly high, fairly upright and comfortable. So all in all, taking a look at the geometry, the gearing, you know, the tire clearance and all of that, this bike is probably one of the most capable gravel bikes in the list. And it's also $969. Okay, so the next bike is the 2021 Poseidon Redwood. This is the most widest tire clearance gravel bike in the list. So if you're looking to have the fattest tires possible, then this is probably your go-to bike. So it comes with 27.5 by 2.35 inch tires. And if you wanna put the widest possible tires on this bike, you're looking at 27.5 by 2.5 inch tires, which is fairly incredible tire clearance for something that's considered a gravel bike. But this is a much more than just a gravel bike. It's one of those adventure ready bikes as well. So you get quite an array of adventure specific ca characteristics on this bike. So the build features a 6061 double butted hydroformed aluminium frame and an aluminium fork as well. So this is a complete aluminium build. So it's not steel or it doesn't have any carbon on it, which is probably one of the downsides to this bike, but you've got to sacrifice somewhere. Most of these bikes are sacrificing somewhere in consideration to get around that thousand dollar mark. So it's powered by a one by 10 Advent X group set. So this gives you a 38 tooth narrow wide crank with a micro shift 1148 tooth cassette, which gives you one of the best granny gears in this list at 21.88 inches and the highest gear of 95.54 inches. So this gives you a combined gear ratio of 0.79 to 3.45. Now the stack reach ratio on this bike is a little lower than most other bikes. So it's probably not the most upright and comfortable position for longer days in the saddle but it's close to that 1.5 at 1.48. Now I struggled to find much information about the geometry in specifically the trail and some other measurements on this bike. Uh, from what I could tell, the chain state is 440 millimeters for that medium sized frame. So that gives you a bit of a chill feel in the back. It's not the longest and it's not the shortest when it comes to gravel bikes. It's probably somewhere in the middle there. And it's priced at just under $900. So the reason why this bike made the list is that huge tire clearance capability. 2.5 inches is incredible. That can pretty much take you on any trails you want to shred. And it comes with triple mounts on the fork as well, so you can add cargo cages. And that really expands its gear carrying capabilities. Okay, so another steel gravel bike. I'm probably going to consider this uh, the most value for money gravel bike. And that's the Fuji Jari 2.5. So it comes in at just under $700 which is probably one of the cheapest gravel bikes in this list, but it still has adventure geometry. It still has adventure capabilities in terms of carrying gear and stuff. There is some downsides to it. It is fairly heavy at 13.1 kilograms, which is around 28.88 pounds. And it also comes with a fairly modest two by eight Claris drivetrain, which 
you know, isn't the best. And it also comes with 700C by 38 mil tires, you know, is on that lower width for a gravel bike. It has quite a lot of carrying capability features. So you get the top tube mount. You also get two eyelets on the fork and then you get like this padding underneath the top tube there, which adds for like comfort when you want to pick the bike up and sit it on your shoulder, which is a pretty interesting and unique feature that not many really any other bike has. So it doesn't have the widest of tire clearances when compared to other gravel bikes, but it has a fairly good climbing gear with a 22.53 inch granny gear. And also the geometry is fairly comfortable for those longer days in the saddle. So it has a really good 1.55 stack reach ratio, which is really nice and comfortable and upright. Then you have a 67 millimeter trail, which makes it feel rather stable and on the higher end for an average gravel bike build. And then the chain stay is 435 mils, which is right on that mid range, making it feel stable in the rear. Again, it probably would be an even better pickup if it offered wider than 43 millimeter tires. So it doesn't offer the widest tire clearance there. Because it's only $699, it's quite a good price and a, and a really good bargain. So the next bike I wanted to talk to you guys about is the new 2021 State Bicycle Co. Gravel Bike. This bike, comes in a 700C or a 650B option. Currently, they only have 700C on their website at the time of filming this video. I reached out to them and asked if they're gonna offer the 650B anytime soon, and they said to stay tuned in the next month or so. I was planning to get this bike to test it out because it is really good value for money. It's only priced at around 800 bucks. Again, a full steel build, and it does have rather limited climbing gear, which is where it compromises for the price, with only a 27.19 inch granny gear, which ideally isn't at all the best, but it made the list because it's so cheap, it offers pretty good tire clearance. So it comes with 650B by 2.1 inch tires or the 700C option comes with the 38 mils. One of the things I like about it is its carrying capabilities and especially the fork, it has four mounts on each side of the fork. I'd probably recommend this if you're just looking for a, you know, an entry level gravel bike and you're just wanting to get into it at a really good price, uh, go for those 650B wheels offering you know pretty wide tire clearance there. So it's probably more ideal if you're looking to ride just solely gravel roads. I'd probably not recommend this because that really limited climbing gear is probably not the best for climbing up you know mountain bike trails and hills, like really steep hills and stuff especially when you have a, you know, bikepacking gear on board. So again, I struggle to find much information about the geometry of this bike, but some owners recommend this for a bikepacking bike. And that's thanks to the long rear end, which helps track straight and it's not that twitchy. Honestly, the 42 tooth crank at the front is probably too large in my opinion. And if you're probably gonna get this bike, you might wanna even opt that out for like a 62 tooth or something like that. So you can get a better climbing result. And then that could probably make this a really capable gravel bike. Okay, so the next bike, it's a favorite. Uh, it's even that good that I just purchased it and I can't wait to, to try it out. It's the Marin Casio Plus. Again, the new 2021 model, not really anything has changed for this year, but it is a 650B gravel bike that comes with 47C tires, priced at around that $900 range. Full steel and you get that one by nine advent group set. So again, it's probably one of the heavier bikes in the list when it comes to comparing to most other gravel bikes. With that full steel frame and fork build, it does come with mechanical disc brakes, which is, you know, most common amongst all these bikes around that $1,000 range. Also, I should mention if you guys want a comparative table, taking a look at all these bikes plus some other options that I have over at my blog, I have this pretty in-depth table that compares gear ratio. It compares all the specs of each bike in a table that's really easily and visually digestible and um, easy to consume. So if you wanna check that out, it's linked down below, as I said before, in the link in the description. But with this bike, it comes with handlebars that, that offer 19 degree flare, which would add a little bit extra comfort. When it comes to components, you get the FSA Tempo Compact Narrow Wide 42 tooth crank, which again is probably a bit too big of a tooth. I'd probably change that if you get the option to. And the Sunrace 9 speed 1146 tooth cassette. So overall, this gives you just under a 25 inch granny gear, which is pretty nice and ideal for a gravel bike. Equals out to a gear ratio of 0.91 to 3.82. And again, the geometry is rather upright, offering a 1.52 stack reach ratio for a 45 centimeter frame. And the rear feels rather quick, 
and maybe even a little jumpy. And with the trail, it, it feels rather predictable when it comes to steering. So please forgive me, this bike is $50 over the budget at $1,050. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit lighter weight with an aluminium and a carbon fork build, I would recommend the Cannondale Topstone 4 2021 model gravel bike. So it comes with a 1x10 at Event X group set, which is considered a modest to sort of mid-range component level. And you get that nice and average 1.5 stack reach ratio, very capable 22.74 inch climbing gear combined with a 700C by 37C tire and wheel. So you get the top tube mount and it kind of looks like a really nice bike. I really like it in that blue color. So it comes with a 42 tooth crank and micro shift 1148 cassette and it rolls on those WTB Riddler comps which are 700 by 37 tires as I mentioned before and you get some pretty good stopping power with the Pro Max Render R mechanical disc brakes. So when it comes to the bike geometry combined with that 1.5 stack reach ratio which in my opinion is considered you know a nice and sweet spot for upright but also sort of racy positioning as well. So this bike really blends nicely with being a road bike, gravel bike and then a tad of bike packing here and there if you want to get your feet wet in some adventure. Another bike that always makes the list for these thousand dollar mark gravel bikes is the Salsa Journeyman especially in the 650B option. So this model that's just under a thousand bucks comes with the Claris 2x8 drivetrain group set. This means a full aluminum build and it is a little heavy, but it's not as heavy as some of the other bikes that we've mentioned today at 12.3 kilograms or 27 pounds. You get a rather upright and relaxed and comfortable stack reach ratio of 1.54 and the climbing gear is just over 25 inches at 25.5 and it comes with 27.5 by 2.1 inch wheels and tires. So as quoted by Salsa themselves, they say the journeyman provides features the cycling enthusiast is looking for to take on their first gravel race or their first ramble down the old B road. So having that said, it's one of the better entry level gravel bikes. So just looking at the aesthetics of the bike, it kind of just works if you know what I mean. There's something that I love about that green earthy color that it comes in. It just speaks adventure. And then you have an overall geometry and proportions that are really pleasing, especially when it comes to comfortability when riding. So you get those three mounting eyelets on the fantail fork plus a top tube mount as well and some bottle cage mounts there as usual and a rear rack mount which is usual. So when it comes to the journeyman's geometry you get that upright stack reach ratio which is comfortable for long riding days and then you get a 64 millimeter trail making it feel predictable at the front and then a chainstay of 440 millimeters, making it rather chill and ride like an all-rounder in the rear. So this bike really shines on gravel and is probably best suited for off-road adventuring. It has really good adventure capabilities and it's under a thousand dollars, you just can't go wrong. So guys, that's it for today's video. I kind of ruined the audio on the outro to this video, so I'm just filming it again, which is why I'm wearing a different t-shirt. But thanks guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with other videos like this. I have plans to film some other videos like the best steel gravel bikes, best aluminium gravel bikes, uh, best gravel bikes under other price ranges and that kind of stuff. And then taking a look at touring bikes and all that as well. So other bikes that would be equipped for adventures. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Make sure to give us a thumbs up and drop a comment down below as well. And let me know what bike you're interested in. And uh, if I missed any of the bikes that you particularly probably wanted to hear in this video, um, again, there is a link in the description with some more gravel bikes that I recommend around this thousand dollar mark. I uh, can't get them all, unfortunately, but um, I tried my best. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.